There is no doubt that Stable Diffusion, being an open source and being available to the community, it is one of the most flexible and dynamic text-to-image generators we can find in the market today. But one of the strongest features is the ability to add and modify the already existing checkpoints in order to add new information. One of the things is called LoRa. Unlike training my own checkpoint that has the biggest quality but takes a lot of training time and, and is actually destructive to the checkpoint itself, meaning that it changes the checkpoint itself, LoRa is an add-on that you can add on top of an existing model, meaning that you can use a specific LoRa on several models, we will see it in this video. You can add your own information like specific characters, specific styling, specific objects and things like that without ruining the original checkpoint. Let's take a look and see how we can already use LoRa's that other people generated right now. Let's start. So of course, we're going to start by running Comfy UI. So let's open up the interface and start from the default workflow. We're going to use the Juggernaut. I really like it. Uh, it's got a very high quality results when it comes to humans. And now we want to implement a LoRa. But what is a LoRa? Well, you can look at the LoRa as a sort of an add-on. Um, when it comes to adding your own characters or your own custom styling and things like that, there are several ways to, to solve the issue. One way is to train your own checkpoint, which usually gives you the best results, but it's very time consuming. It's a very hard process. And when you generate your own checkpoint, you have to load this checkpoint and it usually is a very large file. So if you're basing your checkpoint on the Stable Diffusion Excel, for example, it will probably take anywhere between three to six gigabytes, depending on the quality of the checkpoint. Once you generate the checkpoint, you cannot really use other checkpoints. You have to use that specific checkpoint that you've generated. Embedding is a sort of a descriptor, meaning that it holds in itself uh, a long prompt and descriptions that are embedded into the text that you generate. So if, for example, I uh, created some kind of a prompt and then I will add an embedding to it, what it does behind the scenes sort of adds a very detailed prompt that tells the model exactly what you want to generate. Embedding files are usually very small, a few Ks, and they will give you decent results. LoRa is somewhere in between embedding and your own checkpoint. What LoRa does in a very simplistic way is a set of weights that you're saving as an add-on. And then you add these weights to the existing model. This means that you can implement a LoRa on any model that you want. So I can use the Juggernaut model and add my LoRa into it. This way it's non-destructive, meaning that I can use the same LoRa on several models. What I need to make sure is that the LoRa that I've trained is used on the same base model. So if I'm using a LoRa that was trained on SDXL, I cannot really use it on a, on a Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint, for example. I can only use it on checkpoints that were also trained on Stable Diffusion XL. So how do we get LoRa? How do you see what LoRa I want to use and how do you actually use it? Let's take a look. In order to do that, Let's just uh, give it a run in the meantime. And while it's running, let's go to Civit AI. So now you can see that the welcome page shows you generations of the community. We've already seen this uh, website in other videos. Uh, so I'm not going to go over everything here, but what I am going to do is go to models here on the top. And once I click model on the right, you have a button called filters. Let's close this new content rating system. I will click on filters and here I'm going to check mark LoRa and I'm going to use the base model of SDXL 1.0. This means that it will only show me LoRa's that were trained on an SDXL base model. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm using here the Juggernaut model that was trained on SDXL. And here you can literally just look for any LoRa that you want and I'm going to browse it with you. For example, you can see there is a LoRa that will give you an isometric tiles and it is based on SDXL. We will look for uh, some kind of a nice LoRa and we will go with the Wizards Vintage Rubber Hose Animation Style. Let's click on the cube and it will take us to the LoRa page 
and you can see some examples what ex what exactly it's going to do and what we need to take note here is two things first of all as we said the base model to make sure that it fits the model that we're using to generate the image and the trigger words not all LoRa have trigger words but if they do have a trigger word it means that you need to add this trigger word into the prompt in order to make the LoRa work this means that once the comfy UI interface encounters this trigger word in the prompt it will go and process the LoRa weightings so we can see here the trigger words and let's just download LoRa files are usually small they can take a few hundred megabytes sometimes it can only be a few dozen and we are just going to download the file and let's give it a second to download once it's downloaded we'll simply go to the download uh, folder and what I usually do is rename the file in a way that will help me understand how to use it simply change its name to Excel dash in order for me to know that this lower file is based on Excel model and here I will just copy one of the trigger words so I will go with the first one you can use either one usually it has the same similar effect and I will simply paste it on the name and what I usually do I just make it in brackets this way what's in brackets I know that it is the trigger word and I can easily understand how to trigger the Lua we're going to cut it and we're going to paste it into the Confi UI folder where the Confi UI is installed there you will go to models and you will have a folder called Lora. And inside this LoRa, we're going to paste the file and we're going to go back to our interface. And right here, we're going to simply click refresh. Once we click refresh, it will refresh all the nodes to include the new files that were added. So let's, for example, generate a cute prompt, a portrait of a nice old man looking at the camera. And let's give it a 1024 by 1024, of course, because we're using an SDXL. Let's change it to 6.5. 14 steps is more than enough. And instead of Euler, we will use our beloved DPMPP and Keras on the scheduler. Let's give it a run and see what we get. So you can see we got a very nice result. I really like Juggernaut's rendering. Uh, the result is very compelling it looks very realistic and now let's just go to the view history and click on load so we can keep the seed number we'll change it to fix and once we run we will basically get the same exact result so no matter how many times we will kick the cube prompt now it will get us the same result in order to see how the lore affects let's just add the trigger word that we copied earlier from the LoRa and see how it affects the results on the same token, on the same prompt, only we add the rubber hose style illustration and let's see how it affects. And let's click Q prompt. So we can see that it completely changed the image and it generated some kind of an illustration. It looks a bit 3D and it looks much more uh, um, stylized. The details are very nice but you can see that it's far from what we've seen here it's nowhere close to what we see on the LoRa page so now let's embed the LoRa and see if it really does change the animation to something similar and in order to do that we will simply add a load LoRa node we will keep load and you will see here that you have a load a LoRa node for LoRa loader and as simple as that it accepts two things and it outputs two things so it accepts the clip and we need to use the clip from the model loader directly into the LoRa and we need to use the model directly from the model loader into the LoRa what it does now we will choose here the Excel rubber hose style illustration that we've just downloaded earlier and we're going to export or to output the model here directly into the case sampler and the clip directly into the clip text encoder which is where we write down our prompt and what it will basically do it will add the weightings of this LoRa into the model so it loads the model and it adds the weighting of the LoRa to the model 
and only then it runs the clip and in the clip once it recognizes this uh, trigger word it actually activates the weights on the lower part of the model and this is what it will generate a new output for the model notice here that we have two parameters strength of the model and strength of the clip which means how strong the weights will affect the model and how strong will the prompt affect the usage of the lower. So you can play with them, there are no rules, you can make the strength clip lower and the strength model lower and you will see that the lower effect will change, all a question of your needs. So if you want the effect to be much more emphasized, just keep the results higher. For now we're going to keep it one and one and let's click Q prompt and see what we get. So as you can see the Laura kicked in and what we get now indeed looks like a vintage animation style and if we will look here we can see that it matches the examples of the Laura. Also what you can do in CBIT AI if you click here on the information icon it will usually give you the information or the prompt that was used so you can see that you can play with it and right now because it's a hundred percent in a strength it takes over the entire concept but it's a beautiful portrait of a nice old man and this time let's run it again but let's make the model 0.7 and make the prompt you know what let's leave the prompt at one and see once again what happens looking at the results now you will see that we are somewhere in between the previous image and the last image that we've done we can check it out in the history so this is the first image that we had this is the one with a hundred percent and this is somewhere in between you can clearly see that it's somewhere in between it's very nice it gives you a lot of control and this is one of the powerful features of LoRa that you can actually decide how strong the LoRa effect will take so let's do another test and this time instead of 0.7 we will do it 0.3 and see how the results is being affected right now. And look at that, you can see that it's much, much more stylized than, than without the LoRa. So I'm reminding you, this is without the LoRa. This is with 30% of the LoRa. And as I said, you can play with the values and get results that are very nice and very accurate to what you need. So here we have something somewhere between the reality and the cartoonish look. It's very nice, I really like this result. Let's see if we can really use it on another model. So we're not going to change anything. We're simply going to go here and choose another model. And this time we're going to choose the model of XL Colorful, which is a very nice model and click go. So you can see that we got a, a different, entirely different image, much more stylized and more cartoonish. And that's because the colorful checkpoint is more stylized in advance. So you can see the results is very nice, very cartoony. And this is basically how it works. But what happens if we want to use several LoRa's in Comfy UI? I want to use both the character illustration and I want to use another one. For example, another uh, a very nice LoRa that I like is called Fire Element. I will put the link in the description, of course. And what it adds, it adds some kind of a fire effect around the generation. So how, how can I go about and do it? It's very, very simple. All you have to do is simply generate another load lower. So we can either duplicate this one or just generate another one. And we will click the load lower. And now instead of outputting the model directly to the case sampler, we will simply output the model of one lower to the second one. And same goes for the clip. And now the clip here goes to the prompt and the model goes to the case sampler. And now we will just choose the LoRa that we want to use. In my case, it's the fire element. And we will simply add fire element name and same goes here. I can select the, the strength of the model and the strength of the clip. And let's go back to our image and see what happens that we added the fire element. So you see that now it also added the fire element concept to the generation. It generated a very nice thing and it combined both the, the stylized LoRa and the fire element LoRa. And let's see very interesting what will happen if we'll make the strengths of the stylized illustration illustrator LoRa uh, to 100% and click the Q prompt. Let's see how it renders the fire in 100% volume. So you can see it struggled a little bit, but 
Nevertheless, the result is very nice. We can clearly see the stylized illustration style and we can see the flames that are also in the stylized illustration style. So it's very nice. I guess that if we lower the, the strength, so you can see that it actually did a very nice job. It generated the flame here in a very stylized way. It looks a character, it looks an illustration. And also look at the lighting of the image. This Laura also adds the lighting concept of the fire. I assume you can see the, the how powerful a Laura implementation can be when it comes to the Comfy UI workflow. As you can see, it's a very powerful feature and it gives you the flexibility to generate almost anything that you want. If you want me to, to create a video about how to train your own LoRa's, uh, let me know in the comments and I will probably do it in the near future. That said, there are so many LoRa's already out there. Uh, you can just play with the Civit AI and like Civit AI, there are several websites that provide LoRa's. So have at it, enjoy. And if you like the video, click the like, click the subscribe and see you next time. Bye bye.